back to my channel or hi if you're new here my name is Emma I make videos I post every Sunday at 8 o'clock so if you're not subscribed to my channel you should go down below and check that out also my Instagram name is in the description box if you want to go look at that so I'm about to start my senior year hmm hmm yeah I've actually already been going to school for a couple weeks because of the way that my school schedule works but I know that generally a lot of the people haven't been going back to school yet or they're about to start going back to school and because it is now my senior year, I thought that I would talk a little about how my junior year went and hopefully give you guys some tips and tricks, some advice for junior year as a whole. So let's just get started. My biggest piece of advice that I want to share with a junior is to try to stay on top of everything. Junior year, you're going to be thrown all sorts of different projects and college application, not college applications, but um, things about colleges, things about schools, stuff about AP courses, you're gonna be given so much more than you've ever been given academically that it can be really stressful. And so my biggest thing that I would like to say is just to stay on top of it. As soon as you're given some sort of a project to do or something, try to get it done. Don't procrastinate is a really big thing that I realized my junior year and actually really paid off was when I was given something I just went ahead and started doing it and that really really helped. So I know people aren't gonna like me when I say this but it's very true. There's a saying about the ACT. Mm. Take it early and take it often. Now what this means is very self-explanatory. As soon as you're able to take the ACT or you think that you are confident enough to take it, take it. Because when you take it the first time you can look back at your test scores and realize where you really need to focus on studying and everything. So there's that, and then once you get that back, that result, then you can take it again, try to improve on that score, and then the next one, and the next one. Now, I know that a lot of people take it up to like, it's like one to three, I think is the majority of people. I've taken it, crap, like four times, five times, four or five times. It's been a lot for me because I just keep wanting to improve my scores a lot, so that's why I keep taking it, and I think that's a pretty good tip that I know that my guidance counselor has told me, my parents have told me, and both of my siblings have both agreed that you should take it early and take it often. It'll really improve your score that way. But going along with scores and things like that, you need to realize at some point that your AP score or your ACT score, your SAT score, things like that, they're just a number. And it doesn't define who you are, it won't define what you do with your life. So the test score and the test numbers don't define who you are. They can affect different things like if you're going to take certain classes for AP things. If you take an AP test and you do well enough, then you don't have to take that class. That's true. But if you don't pass it, that's okay. It's just one class. It's not the end of the world. And for your ACT, people get so hung up on the fact that it's worth so much scholarship money, which yes, that's true. It will help you with scholarships. But that's not the only way that you can get scholarships. You can do it through sports scholarships or uh, portfolio scholarships for different things, um, art art type things. I know that there are different art portfolios that you can submit in for different um, scholarships. So look into the schools that you're looking into and try to see what other scholarships are available other than just the ACT or SAT. Uh, something that I had to learn very early in my junior year was that when I'm doing homework, I have to turn off my phone. It's just how it, how it is. I get distracted far too easily when I get a notification on my phone or something, so I can either turn it to airplane mode or just turn it completely off so that I can get down to business and get all my stuff done when it's given to me. All of my homework, all of my projects, just tuning out the world, not paying attention to it, and just doing the things that I know that I need to do. Another thing that I want to say is that over the course of my high school career, my note-taking uh, skills have increased tremendously and I think the majority of that growth happened my junior year because of the amount of notes that I was having to take for the different AP classes that I was taking. So if you're going to be taking AP classes or you just know that you need to take notes more often in your year of school, then try different strategies of writing down your notes. You can try bullets, you can try different paragraphs, just changing it up really will help and you'll be able to see which way you retain knowledge better. And the thing about taking notes in AP classes that I think is really important is that when you take more notes throughout the course of the year, when it comes towards the end of the year and you have to take the big test about everything, if your notes are perfectly organized and everything, then it'll be a lot easier to study. At least that's what I found. Now talking about AP classes, which is something that you can do your junior year, I will say that in my opinion, I don't see a lot of risk 
for taking an AP test or taking an AP course because yes you're gonna have the ability to possibly do really well on the test and you'll get out of one class and yes it'll be a harder class than maybe a another one but colleges will see if you did your hardest and you tried to take the hardest course even if you didn't pass the test you still took the hardest course that was available so there's that also yes the test costs money but it's honestly not that big of a risk you can do well on the test and get out of one class or you take the test and you don't do so well it, it's not the end of the world colleges don't see that you failed a test they don't see that they don't care about that they colleges focus on if you uh, <laughs> let me let me say this is what I've been told by my uh, guidance counselor by my friends by parents by other leaders in my life other adults so all of this information about what colleges look at I don't just magically know this I've asked questions and I've researched and I've had conversations with people to try to figure out what these things are that colleges actually look at. So they're not looking at, oh my gosh, this person, they got like a 30 on the ACT. Sometimes, yeah, that's what they look at, but they're more interested to see if you're more of a well-rounded person and if you took the hardest courses and if you were also a part of extracurricular activities, like different things that you've done throughout your high school life, things like that. They're not totally worried about what your scores are. But when it comes to AP tests, I really don't think that it's much of a risk. I think if you can do it, if your school offers an AP class or an AP course, take it, try it, see what you can do. Another thing that you also are going to have to realize during your junior year is that while there is going to be school and projects and homework and everything happening all the time, try to break off some time for you and for fun because you're going to get swamped with a lot of things and if you don't make time for yourself you can get really overwhelmed in that and that won't be good for your personal health your mental health or your friends around you because you can really lose re relationships if you're just focusing on school all the time so try to make some time for yourself and your friends just to have fun and forget about school for a little bit but don't do that too often because you want to make sure that you're still on top of everything. People always told me that junior year was going to be the hardest year of my life and that I was going to hate it and that I was going to be swamped and die and never have fun and blah 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 blah. That was completely, not completely untrue, but that was for the majority untrue. Yes, there was homework. Yes, there were hard times. But I think that you have the choice, choice, <laughs> I think you have the choice to make junior year the best year or the worst year of your high school career. I think that if you stick to the things that you know that you want to do and while doing the things that you know that you have to do, you can find that balance and make junior year a lot of fun. <laughs> this is more a bit of a side note, but I, when I was writing these things down, I realized that I should probably say this in this video. Um, prom costs a lot of money. Yes. I went to prom my sophomore year as well as my junior year. And so I kind of already knew this, but prom is very expensive. When I went my sophomore year, I obviously was invited to go, so I didn't have to pay for a lot of the things, thank you, person. But my junior year, I went by myself. Well, I went with a couple friends, but obviously I paid for all of my own things. And I did not realize how much that money can add up, because you've got like the dress, the hair, the makeup, the getting your nails done, the actual cost of dinner and the ticket. The ticket for prom alone can cost up to a hundred dollars, which is stupidly expensive. But I really do think that prom is a lot of fun and it's something that I enjoy going to, so if prom is your type of scene, great. Just realize that it will cost you a lot of money, so try saving up earlier, which is something that I didn't do, but I will definitely be doing my senior year. <laughs> And the last thing that I want to say is to find an outlet, whether that's running or doing something creative like um, painting or being a part of the musical at your school or singing or see, I'm more of an artsy person. I'm not more of like the sports aspect, but I know that some people prefer like running or boxing or playing a sport or that type of thing as their outlet, but to find some sort of an, uh, something to do um, that's not school and that's not just watching Netflix or sleeping can really help you and it stimulates your brains in different ways that aren't just school. So rather than just telling you all of my advice, I actually texted some of my friends and they are now going to be sharing some of their advice. I'm going to just read their text and put it up here on the screen and I'm not going to say their name for the sake of privacy. If it'll only take you five minutes to do something, then get it over with. Small things pile up and can become big problems. Best advice, an academic and mental health balance is crucial to success. Suffering shouldn't become the norm for your entire for an entire year of your life. Don't let the stress get the better of you. Just get the work done and remember to breathe. 
Talk to people if it gets too much. Mental health is just as important as school. Ask your teachers for help when you need it. Most really want to see you succeed, and it's better to ask than struggle silently. Start thinking about college, but not too much. While it's important, you always have a chance to change your major. Think generally what you would like to do. Don't be scared to take AP courses. Also, take some time to recuperate and chill. Stay on top of your work, but don't let it take over your life. Always make sure you have time to calm down and not worry about school for a little bit. So I hope that my advice and my friend's advice was helpful to you rising juniors, and some of these things can really apply to other kids throughout their college or middle school life. Um, but I hope that this was a very helpful video, and if you liked it, then please be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel down below if you're not. Also, like I said before, my Instagram name is in the description box below if you'd like to check that out. So that is it for this video, and I will see you guys next Sunday at 8 o'clock. Bye!